Good day, learners. Welcome to your EMS lesson. Our topic for today is the cash payment journal. Before we continue, let us recap on our previous lessons. In our previous lessons, we learned that there are two cash journals that we are doing in grade eight. One is the cash receipt journal, where we record any transaction where the business receives money. But as we all know, the business does not only receive money, there are a lot of payments that needs to be done in order for the business to run. These payments will be recorded in our cash payment journal. Let us look at the definition of our cash payment journal. It is a special journal that allows recording of all cash payments. So firstly, the business receives an account where the business owes money. A payment is made by check. The check is posted or given to the payee. The counterfoil information is used to make an entry in the cash payment journal. Learners, the check counterfoil is a source document that serves as proof for all check payments done. Let us look at the basic format for the cash payment journal, which is much similar to our format for a cash receipt journal. We'll have our heading on the top, which will be the name of the journal, also with the name of the business and the month and year in which the transaction took place. So in this case, it will be cash payment journal of TLC Salon for October 2018. Also, the abbreviation for the subsidiary book as well as the number of the subsidiary book as you can see below. Let us look at the first column of our CPJ, the document column. Here you will record the check number if payment was made by a check or BS which is for bank statement if payment was made via EFT. Our second column is the day column where you will record the day of the month of which the transaction occurred. Then our third column is the name of payee. Here you will need to complete the name of the person or business whom the business is paying. So here we actually record the name of a person or the name of the business of which we are paying. The folio column is left blank in grade eight. Then our bank column, we record the amount of payment. The next column is our consumable stores. Here we record the amount for products that get used up when providing a service. Here, learners, we got our example. Since we're dealing with a salon, um, shampoo use in a salon. So a shampoo or a hair conditioner or um, a hair color that is used in providing our services will be recorded in our consumable stores column. Then the next column is our wages column where we record the amount for wages. Our last two columns is our sundry accounts column. Amount is filled here if there is no special column for the account. That's for our sundry column. The details in our sundry indicates the reason for payment, for example, equipment, only to be used if the account does not have a special column in our CPJ. So if the account is not, uh, does not fall under consumable stores or wages, then we use our sundry account column. Learners, we're moving to the next page where we're going to explain that each payment have an account name to describe the nature of the payment. So when the business is buying pens or when the business bought pens or paper or just writing material, this will be recorded as stationary into our cash payment journal. Payment for premises, it will be recorded as rent expense. Monthly payment for staff or labor, those will be salaries. Payment for calls made to be telephone. Payment to municipality for water or electricity. This will be recorded as water and electricity into our sundry columns. 
item used by the business to provide services. These are consumable stores. This will be written as consumable stores in, in our CPJ. Then weekly payment to staff for labor to be recorded as wages. Payment for advertising to be advertising money that the owner takes for personal use. Learners, when the owner takes money in the business for his or her own personal use, the correct term to use is drawings. So we record these transactions as drawings in our CPJ. Property that the business owns um, and not rents, it's land and buildings. Equipment that the business uses for example, computer or a printer, this will be written as equipment. Vehicles bought for business use, it will be recorded as vehicles. Let us go to the next page where we have um, an example. Our transactions are for October 2020. And you can see we got three transactions, one on the seventh of the month, we paid S test 800 rand with check number 001 for wages for the first week of business. So let us try and record this transaction. Our check number is 001. We were given on our transaction. So under our, our document column, we record 001. The day is the seventh. Who are we paying? We are paying S test. An amount that we are paying to STS is 800 trend, which will come out of our bank column. And why are we paying this amount? It's because we are paying wages. Do we have a column for wages in our CPJ? The answer is yes. Then you record the amount in the appropriate column, which is our wages column. Then our second transaction is on the ninth. What materials from macro stores for 900 rand? paid with check number 002. Our source document is 002. As we were given, the day is the ninth. Who are we paying? Macro stores. How much are we paying to macro stores? Is 900 rand out of our bank column. Learners, because it's material, it falls under our consumable stores. So we will record this amount in our consumable stores column. Our last transaction is on the 11th, paid rent for the month to Steer and Company for 950 rand by a check, by EFT, pardon me. Because it's by EFT, our source document is BS, as you can see below. Then the day is the 11th. Which company are we paying the name of the business? is Steer and Company. Then how much are we paying today? It's 950 rand. The reason why we are paying this amount is we are paying for rent for that month, for the month of October. Do we have a rent column in our CPJ? The answer is no. So we are going to use the sundry columns to record this transaction. So in our sundry amount column, we've got 950 and the reason is rent expense. Then as we got few notes below where the first column, the name of PE column, um, the name that appears on the check is written here. So this column, often cash checks are issued. In this case, the word cash will be written. So in this column, we write the name that appears on the check if happens that there's no name given of the person or business of which you are paying and the check is written cash of which we are withdrawing money from our bank account, um, in that case, cash should be written in this column. Then our bank column, this is the amount being paid. That way we write the amount being paid. The, number three, these are contra accounts. The reason why payment is made. So from these columns, we write the reason why payment is made. The last column, if the column is not present for an account, the sundry column is used as is in the in CRJ. So the same rule applies. 
last example that we got, um, use the transaction below to complete the cash payment journal of Jack Cleaning Services for the month of August, 2019. So the first transaction we drew check number 66 for 2,500 to pay for wages. Okay, the second, um, we have actually a second transaction, two transaction on it on this day where we paid TLC for sanitizers to the value of 5,000 Rand. Payment was made by EFT. So let us record the first transaction. But before we go to the first transaction learners, very important, we must give our journal a heading. So our cash payment journal of tax cleaning services for the month of August, because August is the eighth month of the year, our interest number will be eight. So we will write CPJ eight. So on the third our source document is 66 because we were given the check number. The day is the third. In this case, because we are not given the name of the person or the business, we are withdrawing cash, then we are going to write cash in our name of payee column. Then this cash was 2,500, it must show in our bank column. And also why were we taking out this cash? It was for wages, we were paying for wages. Do we have a column for wages in our CPJ? Yes. So the 2,500 rand will reflect in our wages column. Then our second transaction, on the third, we paid TLC for sanitizers to the value of 5,000 rand. So as you can see, learners, we paid via EFT. So if you are paying by EFT, your source document is BS. So source document is BS. We are going to put a dot because we do not repeat the date if there's two transactions on the same day. Who are we paying? We are paying TLC. The amount that we're paying is 5,000 Rand. Then learners, very important because we are dealing with a cleaning um, services business. Um, sanitizers will fall under our cleaning material. So hence, we are going to put this amount into consumable stores. So 5,000 Rand will reflect in our consumable stores column. On the fourth, equipment to the value of 8,000 Rand was purchased from OmniPlus. Payment was made by EFT. So our source document is BS because payment was made by EFT. The date is the fourth. Who are we paying? OmniPlus. Amount that we are paying, it's 8,000 Rand. Why are we paying this amount again? It's for equipment that we bought. Do we have a column for equipment in our CPJ? No. So this will be recorded in our sundry accounts column, 8,000 Rand, and the reason is equipment. Okay, on the 14th, we do a cash check for 3,000 Rand for personal use. Here, yeah, very important as well. Check number is 67. Why are we saying the cash number is 67? It's because what we know is that check numbers must be entered in numerical order. So the last check number we had, it was 66. So the next one is 67. The date is the 14th. We are not giving the name of the person because we wanted cash from the bank. So we are going to write cash in this column. The amount is 3,000 Rand. And the reason will be drawings because we are withdrawing this money for the owner's personal use. Learners, we do not have a column for drawings in our CPJ. So this will be recorded into our sundry columns. 3,000 Rand drawings will be our reason. The last transaction, a check was issued to several stores for cleaning material, 2,600 and 500 Rand for stationery. So in this transaction, we paid for two separate accounts. Then our source document is number 68, check number 68, because we had a check number 67 previously. The day is the 22nd, who are we paying? It's Samuel Stores. 
the amount that we are paying, we have to add these two amounts because we are paying in total 3,100. 2,600 plus 500 equals 3,100. What are we paying for? One is for cleaning material, which falls under consumable stores. So, so the 2,600 will be under consumable stores. And then we are paying 500 then for stationery. So this will go under our stationery. Then we add, we add through our columns. Then as very important is that you actually give reason why you are paying. So in this case, it was for cleaning material and stationery. So you must be able to record these transactions correctly. Then as the next three pages is activities that needs to be completed, activity one, activity two, and activity three. Please make sure that you complete this. On our next lesson, we will do um, corrections on these activities. For now, it's a goodbye. Thank you. Thanks.